How many believe that your Sunday morning experience should be a life-altering experience? Do you believe that today? In other words, when you come on Sunday morning, realistically, we should be different when we leave to the glory of God. Amen? I believe that that's what this place is, and I believe that today has the potential to be that for many of us this morning. But I'm going to ask you to participate, if you will. I'm going to ask you to do something as I go forth just a little bit that's going to get you involved in this morning's message because I believe it'll be a defining moment for you if you accept it and receive it. Amen. With that in mind, I'm going to ask you, if you will, if you have your Bibles, to turn with me to the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, chapter 10. I'm going to be in the book of Joshua, chapter 9 and chapter 10 today. But I'm going to read these foundational verses to you from the book of Joshua, chapter 10. Believe in my spirit that there's some things that are transitioning in our presence. I believe that we're, we're headed to a higher level. I wonder if this morning is there anyone that believes that with me, that we're, we're headed to a higher level than we've ever been. And this morning, I'm going to simply, before I, I read these scriptures to you, I, I believe that what I would like to do is just begin, begin before I present the message, uh, a word of affirmation that we can affirm or confirm certain things in my life, in our lives rather. And with that in mind, I'm going to ask you, if you will, I'm going to read to you five statements of faith right now. And if you, if you believe them and if you want to receive them, I want you to repeat them after me. And I say this with this in mind. Once again, I firmly believe that our Sunday morning experience should be a life transforming moment in time. And I don't believe that it's time, it, 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 we, it's time for us to get beyond just the, the nominal Christianity. But when we come here, we come with the anticipation and the expectation of God the Holy Spirit speaking to us directly. Amen? Are you with me? With that in mind, I want you to repeat this after me. I am a child of God. I want you to receive that in your spirit, in your heart. Believe it with all your heart. Let's say it again. I am a child of God. I believe in the Word of God. Today, I will receive the Word of God. Today, I will trust the Word of God. Today, I will apply the Word of God. Do you mean that? Do you believe it? With that in mind, from the book of Joshua, chapter 9. Chapter 10, rather. Going to be in reading in verse 16. Of the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 16. But these five kings had fled and hidden themselves in a cave at Machadah. And it was told Joshua saying, the five kings have been found hiding in the cave at Machadah. So Joshua roll, said, roll large stones against the mouth of the cave and set men by it to guard them. And do not stay there yourselves, but pursue your enemies and attack their rear guard. Do not allow them to enter their cities for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. Then it happened while Joshua and the children of Israel made an end of the slain of them with a great slaughter till they had finished that those who escaped entered fortified cities and all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Machadah in peace. No one moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings to me from the cave. And they did so and brought out those five kings to him from the cave the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. So it was when they brought out those kings to Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war who went with him, come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. And they drew near and put their feet on their necks. Then Joshua said to them, do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And afterward, Joshua struck them and killed them and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging on the trees until evening. So it was at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down from the trees, cast them into the cave where they had been hidden, and laid large stones against the cave's mouth, which remain until this very day. Let's pray. 
Father in heaven, we come once again in Jesus' name, honoring you as our God. We thank you once again for allowing us to assemble in this place today. We know that we are not here by mistake. We know that this is a divine moment in our lives. And Lord, once again, for the benefit of those who have assembled in this room, I simply yield myself to you. I simply acknowledge that I desperately need you, that I can't do what you called me to do apart from your spirit, that the spirit of the living God fall freshly upon me, that I may minister this your word to these, your people, Father. We acknowledge you as God. We give you glory. We give you praise as we magnify your son and pray in his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Over the past number of days, in my mind and heart, I have truly believed that we are a place and a people of destiny. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that God has some tremendous vision for this place and purpose. I believe that he has assembled you to be a part of his plan in this place. And I believe that God has a tremendous desire to use us for his glory in this location. Do you believe that this morning? Well, with that, with that in mind, I firmly believe because of that, that it's time for us as the people of God to go beyond where we have been. To not be satisfied or content with the experiences of the past, but to, to definitively in our mind determine that we are aligning our will with the will of God right now. And believe in our hearts that once again, that God has purpose for us even in this place today. And if we somehow can come together within our mind and, and understand that, that God has a, a definitive purpose and desire for us, then we, as we align with his will, we can see God move tremendously, not only in our own lives, but in our presence. I wonder how many of us desire that even today, that you are not here by mistake, that you're here with a purpose, that God has a plan for you, that God has a plan for us, and that together as we go forward in him, we can experience what God has ordained. Amen. Now this morning, I, I want to remind you, as I've stated in the past, that my responsibility to you can be found in 2 Peter verse, chapter 1, verse 10. A verse that simply says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. That, that Peter wrote those words in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. In other words, to, to help you to understand that God has a plan for you individually, not just me exclusively, but you individually and we collectively. Somebody say with me, God has a plan for me. Do, do you really mean that this morning? If you really mean that, I want, to hear, I want you to say it like you really mean it. God has a plan for my life. Now, now, my responsibility is to help you get to this place where you can be sure and certain of what God has ordained in your life. Now, now with that, that in mind, I want you to understand as I read that in its entirety. Let me read that in its entirety. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. Therefore, brethren, uh, once again, let me just emphasize, be more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. I wonder how many of us have ever stumbled. Is there anyone here? I'm asking you to just be transparent with me. Help me to preach this message today. He goes on to say, if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an interest will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. With that in mind, once again, my commitment to you is not to be negligent to you, to remind you always of these things that pertain to the Word of God for your life. You see, all over the Word of God, there are promises. Romans 8, 37, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
Notice one simple verse that, that is so profound and, and the promise within it is, is, is so strong and powerful that, that the word says we are more than conquerors. I wonder how many of us want to be conquerors in our life, in our situations, in our circumstances. And yet this scripture says that we are more than just conquerors. We are created to be more than just overcomers, but to make a difference in the kingdom of God for his purposes. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to ask you, if you will, to work with me today. Because this message is not only for me, but it's for you. So in order for us to progress, over the past number of weeks, we've been speaking to you from a number of messages that deal with the area of progression or experiencing the promises of God in our lives. And I'm convinced, once again, that, that as we come to the realization of what God has ordained for our lives, that, that, we, that we notice that we get to this place where we desire to experience what He has ordained for us, what He has created us for. This morning, once again, I'm going to bring to you this message, simply entitled, Underneath Your Feet. Underneath Your Feet. This is what I'm going to ask you to do. I wonder how many of us would acknowledge today that there is an area of your life today that you're struggling with. I'm not gonna ask you what it is. I'm not going to ask you to identify it in front of everyone else. This is for you. I wonder this morning if there's some area in your life you're, you're contending with, you're struggling with, something that you, you, you need to simply, uh, or you're challenged with for whatever reason in your life. There's an area that you know that you know that you know is an area that comes against you often. Can you identify? Is there anyone here that can think of something in your life? Whatever it may be, whatever it may be. Now, with that in mind, I'm just going to give you a moment. Because what I want you to do, if you will, I'm going to ask you if you will, will you get involved with me? In front of you, in the sections of every little space, I want you to see something. You will find a pad. You found it already, Trisha. You'll find a pad. There, there's one on each end, not in the center, but one on each end. This is what I want you to do. For those of you that can identify that situation, and I'm going to ask you whatever it is, remember, because this is between you and God. Not be, I, don't, I don't need to know. We don't need to know. It's between you and God. How many have found those little pads? There's pencils in front of you. Um, there, are, there are pencils in front of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. There's another, there should be another one on the other side, Valerie. Is there one on the other side? Right, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Not in the center. They'll, they'll be on the ends. Now, this is what I want you to do. Did you, you write whatever you want to write on it, all right? Right now, I'm going to give you a moment. Whatever that situation, maybe it's, maybe it's fear, maybe it's worry, maybe it's doubt, maybe it's, this, maybe it's, it's an unsuspected or an unexpected diagnosis. What, may, maybe it's, it's a challenge on the job. Maybe it's a personal struggle that you have. Whatever it is, I'm going to ask you to be involved with me. I'm going to ask all of you, if you will, yes, all of you, to be involved. Now, Remember, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that you're not willing to do. Because I firmly believe that in order, one of the things that we've learned as we read the Word of God, one of the things that we'll know, that, that God moves in our lives, but more often than not, God moves according to our faith. And for those of us who have these circumstances, for those of us that have these challenges, for those of us that have those problems, then it's up to you to determine how desperately do you want to deal with that situation in your life. Now, whatever it is, once again, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to write mine right here. I'm going to write mine right here. Now, these are sticky notes. So, if you want to, you can stick it on you for the next few minutes. You can hold on to it. Just keep it with you. Don't let it go. In one form or another, don't let it go. For the remainder of this service, I want you to, in somehow or another, let it be on your person. Don't stick it on uh, the pew in front of you. Keep it in your hand. Put it on your clothes. Keep it on you somewhere that you can identify. Now, once again, you don't have to let anyone else see what it is. No one else has to know. Are you ready? Now, once again, I'm in this with you. 
in the book of Joshua, there's a tremendous account of how God orchestrates his will and his plans. And this morning, I want you to help, hopefully and prayerfully help you to understand that, that, that today there are those of us who, as I read this scripture, yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, that I've come to the realization that oftentimes in our congregation or in any church for that matter, if they are willing to be, to be truthful with themselves and transparent with themselves, there would be those who would simply say, that is not me. I am not a conqueror. There are areas in my life that I feel defeat. Is there anyone here? Areas in your life that you feel defeated, areas in, that you feel challenged. Now, I've come to the realization there are, that there are a number of people who have this testimony. I used to go to church. How many know someone who used to go to church? Anyone? Anyone? And, and to many, that is, that is someone's testimony even today that they used to do this or they used to do that. So something has caused that person to stop attending or assembling together with the brethren. There might be those who, who say, oh, well, I used to be a Christian. I don't know how many of us know anyone who, who it, what, these words that we read, I am, I used to be a child of God. I, I used to believe in the promises of God. I used to believe in the word of God. I used to trust in the promises of God. I used to apply the word of God to my life. And yet today, no longer are they doing so. So situations occur that brought defeat in their lives in some form or another. And I'm here to tell somebody today, listen, a nominal Christian a person who is not fully sold out to the Lordship of Christ and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, a nominal Christian, a casual Christian, is doomed to fail in their Christian journey. There will be times in your life that because of those of us who are not fully ready or desiring to give everything to the Lordship of Christ, when situations come, we find defeat. And I wonder how many of us have ever been there before. How many of you have ever found defeat in a situation in your life? Even as a child of God, you're now a child of God and you found defeat. Now, with, with that in mind, what I want you to understand is that there are those this morning that can say to me, above all things, I want to do what God has for me to do. I believe there are some of you in this, situ in this congregation right now that can use that as your testimony. I want to be all that he wants me to be. Am I speaking to the right crowd today? Now, I, I'm, I am determined, how about this? I am determined not to allow anything to derail me, anyone to distract me. How many of you can say that's me? Nothing will derail me, nothing will distract me. A am I speaking to you this morning? And with that in mind, if that is not you today, if you're not there, there quite yet, I want you to come along on this journey with us today. Amen? Because I'm here to, with the desire to help those that genuinely want to get beyond the now, the moment, the situation, the circumstance, the problem, the trouble, the trial, whatever it may be, for those of you that are saying, you know what, I know that this is not all that I'm supposed to have in the kingdom of God in according to the promises for my life. So this morning, once again, I'm just going to lead you and help you to understand exactly what is happening in this context of, of, context of Scripture. Because what I want you to see and understand that one of the things that you'll learn according to the Word of God is that there is a battle. There is a battle in every one of our lives today at this very moment in time. We're talking about that on Wednesday night. For those of you who have not come or are not coming, uh, we, we have some testimony that Wednesday night is a good experience. Amen? So if you're not doing anything and if you, if you have even a remote desire to go deeper in the Word of God, we want to invite you to come. And the Wednesday night crowd said, amen, amen to the glory of God. With that in mind, I want you to help, help you to understand, to make this personal today. Oftentimes I say, I say, don't make this, it, it's not just about you. Today I want you to make it about you. Why? Because in order for us together collectively to become all that God desires for us to be, there must be some victory in our lives. I'm talking about my life. I'm referring to your life. I'm referring to whatever we are going together, doing together for the glory of God. And today there is this battle, a battle that rages. And every person in the, if you are a child of God, you have enlisted, you've heard me say, in the battlefield of the Lord. You are enlisted as a Christian. You have engaged in warfare. 
The enemy is out to destroy you right where you are. And the battle of the, that rages is not only for your soul, but not, it's not only for your life. It's not only for your present. It's not only for your future. But the battle that rages right now is for the thought processes in your mind. How do you feel in the middle of situations that occur in your life? What do you do? How do you respond? So there's a battle that rages even now. Every one of us finds ourselves in that battle even today. I wonder today how many of us today are in, and can anyone identify once again a battle? A battle that you're in. I'm not going to ask you what they are. I want you to identify them. I want you to acknowledge them. Understand battles. Let me ask you this. Is there anyone here that is in a battle in the home? It's okay. It's okay to, 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 if you want to admit it, I see some hands. How about battles on the job? Situations, circumstances on the job. How, how about battles in the spirit? Battles in the spiritual realm? Situations that you're experiencing? There are, so, so most of us can acknowledge that there's something that mo many of us are struggling today with in our lives. And I'd venture to say that there might be those that are, that are in the battle of acknowledging that they're in a battle, even today. Because oftentimes I'm going to help you to understand and see today that in order for us to overcome these situations, we must acknowledge that they are there. Do you understand one of the reasons why many people will never overcome their struggles in life is because they are simply in denial that they even exist. And I'm here to tell you, if that is us, I, I guarantee you that we will never gain victory in whatever situation that you, might, that you have in your pocket or on you. you. You'll never, you'll never gain victory over this situation if you don't acknowledge that it's there. So let me move on. Let me give you the history, a, a brief history of Israel, because I, I want to get into the heart of this message. Now, the book of Joshua is the book of conquest. But we know that God had made all the promises to the nation of Israel. We know how they were a called out people. We know how God used Moses to deliver the nation of Israel after hundreds of years of Egyptian bondage. We know what happened when, when Moses sent out the spies and, and 10 spies brought back a bad report and two spies brought a, a positive report. But because of their unbelief and their lack of faith in what God could, could do and what he would do, they were made to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. We know the account. But after the 40 years, there came a time where God said to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. And it was time for the nation now to begin to possess the promised land. And because of all that, we, we, we see what happened. We know what occurred in, in the book of, of, of Exodus and, and how they began to, to, to be led of, of Moses. And, and, and now Joshua has taken over the leadership role of the nation. And now the children of Israel, the, the, the people, the covenant people of God, had finally crossed over into the promised land. Now, after all this time, they've crossed over. And, and we know that the waters departed for them to cross the Jordan River on dry ground, very much like the Red Sea experience. At Jericho, we understand and we remember that the walls came tumbling down. And at Ai, the second battle that they were to, uh, to, to take, they got a little bit overconfident and they were defeated. They got out of the will of God. Someone got out of the will of God and caused defeat in the nation. And then because they, they rectified the situation in the second battle of Ai, they overtook the city of Ai. Now, because of that, the nations that were in, in, in the path of the, the approaching army of Israel, they began to live and abide in fear and worried. And what happened is in, in chapter 9, turn with me, if you will, to uh, chapter 9. Now, I want you to begin to see exactly what's happening. Now, because the nations around them were concerned that God's covenant people would now come and destroy them as nations. So, so when that happened, Something occurred in Joshua chapter 9. And it came to pass when all the kings were on this side of the Jordan, beginning with verse 1, in the hills and in the lowlands and in all the coasts of the great sea toward Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard about it that they gathered together to fight with Joshua and Israel with one accord. So now they hear that here comes the nation of Israel and all these nations or all these countries, all these people began to unite to, or desire to unite together or come together so that they could fight against Joshua and Israel. But look at what occurred. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua, what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they were craftily and went and pretended to be ambassadors 
And they took old sacks on their donkeys, old wineskins torn and mended, old and patched sandals on their feet, old garments on, their se- uh, on themselves, and all the bread of their, of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua to the camp of Gilgal, and they said to him and to the men of Israel, We have come from a far country, now therefore make a covenant with us. Then the men of Israel said to the, the Hivites, Perhaps you dwell among us. So how can we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, we are your servants. And Joshua said to them, who are you and where do you come from? And notice what they said in verse 9. From a very far country, your servants have come because of the name of the Lord your God. We have heard of his fame and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, the Sihon king of the Heshbon and Og king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Now, now notice what happened here. Here come the Gibeonites. They really didn't want to fight, but they didn't want to be destroyed. And so they come to Joshua and they tell him that they come from a long way, a long distance. Well, well, we already know that they were deceiving the nation of Israel based upon their desire not to become or to be overwhelmed and overcome. And so in that situation, Joshua asks for specific things in verse eight. He says, who are you and where do you come from? And they proceeded to to say to to Joshua that we've come from a very far place. Well, we already know that that's not what happened. Now, if you continue to read, something very important occurred. Drop down to verse 14. And and I want you to see, because I, I simply don't have enough time to read all this and get into the heart of this message. In verse 14, it says, Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions... But notice what it says in in the next portion of this verse. But they did not ask counsel of the Lord. Did you see that? How many times in our lives have we found ourselves doing something that we should not do or maybe even simply being led in the wrong direction? Why? Because we did not seek counsel of the Lord. Come on now, somebody. How many of us can acknowledge that 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 was me? That is I. I. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot my gift. Notice what happens. Then the men of Israel took some of their provision, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to live with, to let them live. And the rulers of the congregation swore to take them. Do you see what happened? I I love looking out of the crowd and seeing you or looking either up here or looking down reading the word of God. I love to see that. And, 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 And your eyes are not closed and your heads bowed reading the word of God notice what happens here it was the nation of Israel because they did not seek counsel of the Lord that in essence they were connived they were tricked Uh, they were uh, to a certain degree even taken advantage they were deceived and, but, but, but what occurred was if you continue to read it took only three days for these people to be exposed so drop down to verse, nine, verse 22. And once again, I'm just going to jump ahead so that we can get this message in. Then Joshua called for them and spoke, he spoke to them saying, why have you deceived us saying we are, very, we, were, we are very far from you when you dwell near us? Now, therefore, you are cursed and none of you shall be freed from being slaves, woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. And they answered Joshua and said, Because your servants were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore, we were very much afraid of our lives because of you and have done this thing. And now here we are in your hands to do with us as it seems good and right to do to us. So he did to them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel so that they did not kill them. And that day Joshua made them woodcutters and water carriers for the congregation for the altar of the Lord in the place which he would choose even, or he would choose even to this day. Now, in that moment in time, you see exactly what happened. Now Joshua entered into covenant with with these people and based upon the covenant, because Joshua made a covenant with the Gibeonites, now Joshua must hold on to the covenant. He made a promise. There's no going back. He cannot renege on it. Now he is, he, is, he is committed to that covenant. We'll look at what happened in chapter 10. I'm going to go through this quickly. Now it came to pass when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, 
heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and its king, so had he done to Ai and its king. And how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city like one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai. Now, what I want you to see here in, in, in this context, there are a number of things that I want you to see. And what I've learned in the Word of God is, is that oftentimes in the Word of God, there are what we refer to as, as analogies. Situations that represent some metaphors in the Word of God, types and shadows, something that you see in the Word of God that can symbolically represent something else. Because I want you to get something out of this. I don't want just this just to be a, simply a historical lesson about what happened to the nation of Israel. So, so in this context of Scripture, one of the things that you're going to see, let me just say this. Let me give you a few points that I want you to understand. How many of you, once again, acknowledge that you know that you know you're determined that you are a child of God? Is there anyone here that says, I'm not ashamed to acknowledge and to admit that I'm a child of God? I said to you already, because of that fact, you have entered into the battlefield of the Lord. You are in spiritual warfare. And one thing that I will affirm in your mind and in your heart, that along the way in which you go, you will consistently find opposition. If you are a child of God, there will be opposition opposed to you in your direction in which you are now going. How many have been there? How many have felt that? How, is there anyone here that now, even as a child of God, when you think now, okay, I'm more determined now than I ever have been. I'm more convinced now that I can do this better than I ever have. That the moment you're determined, I'm going to give Jesus my everything, everything around you starts to seemingly go awry. Have you ever been there before? Oh, when we're seemingly wanting to move, God, what are your purposes for me? God, I want to abide in your will. God, I want to live in your promises. And you say, Lord, show me. And all of a sudden, instead of see, receiving what you think is the blessing of God, suddenly something happens in your life. We've been there. There's opposition everywhere that you go. Understand, I understand, but, but what I need to remind you of, that in the middle of this opposition, and a greater promise to you that, yes, you will face opposition, but a greater promise to you is that you serve a God who will be committed to you in spite of the opposition, in spite of your situation, in spite of your circumstance. You, you'll, you'll see these things all over the Word of God. You see, we need to be reminded oftentimes, and I'm going to read some verses to you, that there are times in our lives where the God that we serve will fight our battles. As a matter of fact, I hear that theme constantly. I, I often hear that there are times when, when God will fight your battles for you. And it's good to know that that is a principle that is true. But I want to show you another side. Because right now, a pervasive message in the kingdom of God, in the church of God, is that God, no matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've been, no matter where you're going, no matter where, all these different things, that God will fight for you. And aren't you grateful that God will fight for you? But let me show you another side. Because what you'll begin to see here is all these things begin to happen. And I, I read to you a number of, of, of things that occurred. Now, now, because of this, look at what, what occurs. Because in spite of this situation, now, they come against, because they, they come against the, the Gibeons, and they want to destroy the Gibeons. Why? Because they are now in league with the nation of Israel. And if you see in verse 10, chapter 6 of, chapter 10, verse 6, and the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp of Gilgal, saying, do not forsake your servants, come up to us quickly, uh, save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. The very next verse says, so Joshua ascended from Gilgal. Did you notice that Joshua did not say, well, what are you talking about? Joshua didn't say, that's your problem, not ours. Joshua didn't say, well, you deceived us, you tricked us. When you, now you think that we're here to protect you. Joshua didn't say any of that. What am I trying to say to you? A type, a symbol, an analogy, a metaphor. Joshua is a type or foreshadow of Christ, Jesus Christ. So once again, make this about you right now. That in the middle of your situation, in the middle of your circumstance, in the middle of your battle, when something is opposing you or coming against you, and you go to the Joshua in your life, the Joshua being Jesus will not say to you, what are you talking about? You deserve what you got. You deserve, look at what you've done. Look at your life. Your life. That's not the God that we serve. 
isn't it good to know that the God that we serve says, let me get in this battle with you. Listen, people of God, if you've not yet realized that, I'm here to tell somebody today that the God that you serve will get into that battle with you. Now understand, understand exactly what happens. In this situation now, the Bible tells us that Joshua ascended from Gilgal. He and all the people of war with him. And the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Now, now isn't it amazing? One more thing, notice what he, said, what he says. The Lord says to him, do not fear, for I have delivered them into your hand. But the battle hasn't even happened yet. Did you notice that? That there are times in life where the God of the Bible in the present tense will speak in the future tense as though it has already happened. Well, is that not a word of faith for somebody in this place? Because we don't know how it's going to happen. We don't know if it's going to happen. We don't know how we will, we will overcome. But, but isn't it good to know that there are times in our life where God will say to us, do not fear them or do not fear that situation or do not fear whatever it is, for I have delivered them or that situation into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. I wonder if there's anyone here today that has that kind of faith in the God that you serve. Your situations, you see them. You know the opposition. You know what's happening all around you. You know what's coming against you. And now, listen, how many of us have felt not worthy as though we were, uh, listen, listen, the Gibeonites deceived Joshua. How many of us have come to Christ even in a not so good condition? Maybe when it seems as though we did not deserve the covenant promises of God, yet he received us unto himself. That's the God. Come on, somebody. I know that's shouting words for somebody in this place to know that God receives us in that situation. And now, because of the blood covenant with Jesus Christ, God the Father says to the body of Christ, I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Yes, there might be times when you find yourself in the battles in life, but I'm here to tell you, in the middle of that battle, if my spirit lives within you, know that you're not in that battle alone. I am with you, says the Lord. That's the God that we serve. Now, now, now notice in that situation, because I want, you to, I want you to see this. If you continue to read, you'll see a number of different things. You'll see some things that, that began to happen, because I, I, it, you keep on reading, and I've already read to you exactly what, what occurs. Let me read to you just a little bit, and then, and then I'm going to move on. Because notice what happens. It goes on to say in verse, in, let me read, let me read verse 11. And it happened as they fled before Israel. Here, here they go, all, all those kings, all the, those threats, all those that came against the, the, the nation of, uh, of the Gibeonites and, and Israel themselves, because now they're in covenant with them. Notice what happened. Now it happened as they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Haran, that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died. How many would say that that was a God situation? Out of nowhere, large hailstones. Don't tell me the God that we serve is not a supernatural God. Don't tell me the God that we serve is limited by what we see and what we don't see. Don't tell me that the God that we serve is not able to do whatever the God that we serve, that we serve desires to do. Because that's the God that we serve. Notice what happened. So, so, so now, notice, and, and they died. But here's what I want you to see. There were more who died from the hailstones than from the children of Israel, than, than, than the children of Israel killed with the sword. Now get that. Because all over the previous verses, God will say to them that I will deliver them to, unto you. I will cast them before you. I will overcome them. But now in this verse, we see, yes, God, yes, the hailstones. But now you see that the children of Israel killed with the sword. In other words, God may deliver. God may cast that situation before you. God may control that very circumstance in your life. But there are times in our that yet God does do this. But there are times when we have to fight. Are you listening to me? Many of you have lifted up something that you have that is contending in your life. And we're praying, Lord, deliver me. Lord, change this. Lord, Lord, make this different. I'm here to tell somebody in this place, there might be something that you have to do to make that happen. Let me show you. Let me show you. In the next verse, in the next verse, then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, listen, 
Now, now, the day, they, they, they've been chasing after them. The day is getting short. And listen to what, listen to what, what Joshua says. Sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon in the valley of Ajalon. How, how, many, how many would say the audacity of Joshua knowing his situation, knowing his circumstances, knowing what's going on, for Joshua to have the audacity to believe that he can say those words to the sun, stand still over Gibeon, and it would happen. Come on now, how many of us have that kind of determination? How many of us have that type of audacity? Not only the audacity to, 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 to believe that it could happen, the, the, the audacity to believe that it would occur, to believe the impossible. How many would say that for you and me, that's probably not a very probable situation? If, if you, if, listen, if there's anyone here that is more holier than the rest of us or highly anointed, I want you, if you will, to go out there and say, rain, stop raining and see what happens. That was a supernatural God manifestation of God revealing who he is. Notice, we have to get out of the realm of saying, of the God of who he was. Because the same God that who he was is the same God of who he is. And the same God that held, took you out of your problem or your trouble when it was is the same God that will do it now that it is. That is the same God. And I want you to, I want you to get that in your spirit. Listen, but the audacity of, of, of this man, Joshua, to say, son, stand still, to believe that God could do the impossible. See, someone might say, well, but, but Pastor David, he spoke to the sun. But look at what happened. So the sun stood still and the mood stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Now, how many would say that that's a believable scenario? Come on now. Come on now. If I read that to you outside of the Bible, most of it would say, yeah, right, sure. <laughs> Sure that happened. Because, and they lived happily ever after too. But we see it in the word of God. We made a profession of faith. I believe in the word of God. Most of us acknowledge that. That we believe, that we'll receive, that we'll trust, and that we'll apply. So someone says, Pastor David, how do you know? How do you know? Listen, this, uh, I just simply say this. If it's in the word of God, I'm going to believe it. You want to know how I determine what I speak to you? If it's in the Word of God, I believe it. If it's in a language that I don't understand, I go to the original language and then I believe it. That is the Word of God. So now, in this situation, look at what occurred. And, and it goes on to say, is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. For a whole day, the sun did not go down. Now, Someone might say, well, I don't know if I believe that because really, Pastor David, listen, I got you. Because really what? You know what, Pastor David? The sun never really goes down because it's the earth that is turning, right? Okay, so there is scientific evidence, but here's the thing. If in their logic, it was about the sun going down or if in our reasoning, it's that the earth stopped rotating. I'm here to tell both of you the same God did both, one or the other. And it's the same God that we serve. It's the same God that we worship. If someone wants a reason not to believe in the word of God, you can have any reason not to believe, but I choose to believe the word of God. Now in that situation, now you see what happens. And this is what I'm gonna transition right here. Because now notice what it, what it says. And there has, listen, and there has been no day like that before it or after. Notice, notice what, 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 it, what it says here, notice that the Lord heeded the voice of a man. That the voice, that the, the Lord heeded the voice of a man. In other words, Joshua, what a prayer. Joshua, the audacity to believe that it would happen. Oh, Joshua, the, the audacity to acknowledge that, that this could occur. But notice what, is, what it says here. For the Lord fought for Israel. Once again, people of God, listen, let's not ever get to the place where we think it's about us. Because it's the same God that Joshua would pray to that made it all happen. Listen, let's never get to this area in our lives that we think that we've achieved. 
or we think that we're so anointed or we think we're so gifted because I'm here to tell you the same God that gives you that anointing is the same God that gives you those giftings to be used for the body of Christ. It's, listen, can, any, can I get a witness? It is always about Jesus. It is always about Jesus. Now, here's what I want you to see. And right here, I'm gonna go forward because I, I wanna transition here just a little bit. Because the Bible says very clearly what's going on here. There's a battle. They needed supernatural manifestation of God and, and, and God r responded to, to the, 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 the voice of a man. And when I read that, it reminded me of this verse in the book of Mark, chapter 11. You've heard it. We all heard it. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Is not that not a profound command? Have faith in God. Listen, I could, I could stop right there. And I wonder how many of us would receive that and use it the rest of the day. Have faith in God. In the middle of your situation, have faith in God. In the middle of your trial, have faith in God. Now, but notice what it goes on to say. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things shall be, be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Did you hear that? What a powerful verse of faith. In other words, he says, he says whatever, when you believe that you receive them, you will have them. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things will be done. He will have whatever he says. You know what we do? There's a mountain that comes in our life and instead of beginning to speak to that mountain, speak to that mountain. And I'm not saying your words are gonna make that mountain disappear, but here's what it'll do. It'll make you believe that that mountain can be removed. How many of you have mountains in your life right now? Situations, circumstances. You begin to speak to that mountain, be thou removed. And I'm guarantee you that your faith will begin to rise in your spirit and you'll begin to believe on what God, Jesus Christ says through his word. But instead, what do we do? We, we, we get on, oh, a mountain comes in our lives and instead of speaking to the mountain like Jesus says, instead we call Sister Susie or, or, or whoever it is to talk about our mountain. If, you're, if there's a Susie in this house today, nothing personal. Because it could be Brother Bob. Because that's what we do. We talk about our problems. Remember, I am a child of God. Come on, somebody. We talk about our problems, but we forget, I am a child of God. We look at our situations, but we forget, I am a son of God. We forget, I am a daughter of God. I am a child of God. Instead, we look at our situations and we let them overwhelm us. We, 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 we begin to complain instead of trying to, Lord, what are you showing me, Lord? One of the things I say, I say to everyone, when some, I, I, I don't over-spiritualize everything, but I spiritualize everything. Does that make sense? When something happens in my life, I say, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this situation? A couple days ago, I found a nest. I'm going to tell this story. I took it home because it was so beautiful, a nest that fell out of a tree. And I thought, this looks like art. It's so beautiful. Yesterday, I found another one. This one was not so beautiful because it had been broken, fell out of a tree. Yesterday, I was outside yesterday evening. Went outside, all of a sudden, I saw some movement off to the side, and I, and I saw it, and I, I looked over, and it was a little baby bird that had fallen from a very high place. And, and, and when, when, when she read the scripture about God the Father sees every sparrow that falls on the ground. The moment I saw that bird, I, I, the little baby bird, it began to move. I saw its wings move, and, and, and it crushed me because I knew that I could not get it back up to where it was. But I found a pretty nest that I had picked up the day before. And, and, and what I do, I went over, and I, I picked up that little bird, and I went up, and yeah, I, I dug a worm up out of the ground because I looked up, and, 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 and what, what do you feed these birds? worms, fruit, I, and I'm going to tell you something. The Lord, in my heart, because I was feeding that worm to that bird, I, and, and, I, and I was weeping and telling the worm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm telling the truth. I'm sorry. I went inside and got some berries from our refrigerator, began to feed that little bird, and, and the little bird, he just looked up at me, didn't even just open up his mouth, and I, and I said, oh, here best I could do was prop it on top of a high place and I prayed 
But Lord, if you can supernaturally protect that little bird, son, stand still. I don't know what's going to happen, but I spiritualize everything. Because I said, Lord, what do you want me to learn from that situation? And I do. And I recognize that oftentimes there are those who are helpless and hopeless. And they fall from their security in life. And inadvertently, just by mere coincidence and happenstance, I walk by and I see the bird. Somebody should have shouted me down and said the devil is a liar because in this house we don't believe in coincidence and we don't believe in happenstance. We believe on the will, divine will of God. Come on somebody, is this, we believe in the divine master plan and will of God. In other words, it it did not happen by us. And I'm here to tell you, your situation, your circumstances, the God that you serve is already aware of everything that you're going through and he already knows. He sees it, he knows. Let me get back here. Because this is what I want you to see. In that situation, we begin to see exactly what occurred. And now, and now, and now, God says to them, he had already made a covenant, I'll save that for another time because there, there's something that I wanted to show you from the book of Deuteronomy that I want you to see, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna just go over it too quickly because this is what I want you to understand. Who were these men, these kings? What did they represent? Because I'm trying to bring it to our level. You see, Joshua says to, to, to them, they, 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 they hear that, that now these kings, that the people have fled, they've been defeated, but the kings are hiding in a cave. Joshua, he says, but these kings have fled and hidden themselves in the cave of Macedon. And it was told Joshua saying, these five kings have been found hidden in the cave of Macedon. And so notice what occurs. Joshua says, do not allow them to enter the people, their cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. And then while it happened, Joshua and the children of Israel made an end of slaying them with a great slaughter that they all had, uh, till they had finished, those who escaped entered fortified cities and all the people returned to the camp and jo- to Joshua at Makeda in peace. No one moved his tongue against the nation of Israel. And this is what happened. Then Joshua said, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings from, five kings to me from the cave. Now, let me explain this. In the context of what you see here, these kings represent, think, or can represent something to us. Remember, never read something in the word of God without saying, Lord, what can I learn from that? How can I apply it? You see, the Bible tells us that the Joshua, he opens the mouth of the cave and brings out the five kings, and they did so, and they brought out the five kings from the cave, uh, all these different kings, and, and, and Joshua says to the, to the captains of the men of war who went with him, he said, come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings, and they drew near and put their feet on their necks. Now, this is what I want you to understand and see at this moment in time. Then Joshua said to them, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. Here it is. Listen to what it says. For thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Do you see that? Joshua was using that occurrence, that situation, to display to the people that that is what God would do to every one of their enemies. Now, here's what I want you to see. Because of that situation, I'm going to bring it to this place. Five kings that were brought together to contend with the Gibeonites and the nation of Israel. Five kings. Here's what I want you to understand. Today, you and I have situations and circumstances in our lives that have been recruited for your demise. I don't know what they are for you. I don't know what they could be. Maybe, maybe that very situation that you wrote on this paper displays that very thing. So what am I trying to say to you? Maybe the enemy has raised a king in your life to contend with the purposes that God has ordained for you. I don't know what it could be, but some of you do what it is in your life. 
Some of you know what that struggle is. Some of you know what you're fighting against. Some of you know that in the moment, or in the meaning of your desire to pursue the things of God, something contends with your spirit, your thoughts, your mind. And the enemy has recruited those specifically in your life to stop what God is doing in your life. There might be, there might, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe is there, is, is there anyone here that's gone through a series of setbacks in your life? Something that's happened. I see, I see the hands. Is, is there anyone has ever been disappointed in your life? Come on now, somebody. Situations that may occur. Uh, situations that remind you of where you have been. All these different circumstances. Maybe you're in, in financial struggles. Maybe you're in, in marital struggles. Maybe you're, you're having physical problems right now. Maybe there's spiritual problems. Maybe there, there's insecurity. Maybe there's jealousy. Maybe there's doubt. Maybe there's worry. Maybe there's fear. Maybe there is anxiety that the enemy brings into your life. Just when you think that you're going to overcome, something gets into the recesses of your mind and he controls your thoughts. I refer to those as the kings of the enemy. So I don't know, I, I don't know if any of those apply to you. I, I, I really don't know. I, I don't know if any of those things mean anything to you. But I simply am going to jump forward and get to this place. Because that situation is what was identified in those kings. Let me make it personal. How many of you have something in your life right now that you know the enemy will use to stop your progress in God. I see, look, look, look at all the hands. I see the hands. I, I wonder, I wonder what, 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 we, what we would do if, if we were to respond in the same manner as, as Joshua did. Because notice, I've identified a number of ways that the enemy will come and try to come against you. Because you're now in covenant with Jesus Christ. Five kings that were assembled against the people. How many of you can identify that one king that the enemy will use? Is there anyone else? Come on now. Maybe there's doubt. Maybe there's unbelief. Maybe there's lack of faith. Whatever it is, something that the enemy can use in your life to stop your progress in God. Maybe, maybe it's emotional situations. Maybe something happens in your life and you don't know how to contend with it. And instead of dealing with it in a manner that is, that is biblical, instead we want to, we, however it is that you deal with it, you know. Maybe that's the situation. Maybe that's what it is. But, but real quickly, if you just give me some time, I want you to see real quickly what they did. Six things that you'll do to deal with that situation right now. And if you're on the worship team and you're coming back up, and if you wrote something on that piece of paper, bring it with you. Bring it with you. Listen, Joshua said, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings. Listen to me, people of God. Before you can put your foot on that situation, you have to identify it. What is that situation in your life? What is that circumstance? You have to acknowledge it. You have to expose it. You can never defeat it until you and I admit it. The king of the enemy. Admit it. Acknowledge it. Don't, don't deny it. Don't, don't pretend, oh, I can get over it. I can let it go at any time. I, I can, it, it, this doesn't have control over me. I have control over it. Identify it. Notice what he says. And brought out those five kings to him. They brought them to Joshua. Get this. Remember, I said Joshua is a type of foreshadow of Christ. They brought it to Joshua, the kings. That situation that you're contending with, uncontrollable anger, jealousy, unforgiveness, whatever it may be, have you brought it to Jesus? Or are you simply just trying to deal with it on your own and finding a way to solve your own problem? You see what's going on here. You, you, you see what's happening here. You see, he would lead them, understand, and that Joshua was to lead the people into the promised land. I'm here to tell somebody and remind you that Jesus will surely lead you into your promised land if you abide in his promises and in his way. Have you taken it to Jesus? Joshua called all the men of Israel and said to the captains of, the, of, of war who went with him, come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. 
See, Joshua told them what to do. This is what Jesus in the spirit will tell us to, what to do. Are, are you listening to me? Because Joshua now, bring them to me. And Joshua says, this is what you're to do. In other words, Jesus by his spirit will tell us what we're to do in the middle of these situations. But are you listening? Are you listening? And look at what happened. And they drew near and put their feet on their necks. Joshua said, this is what, come near, put your feet on the necks. And what happened? Now, every one of those, every one of them that was subduing their enemy, they, they put that king under their feet. In other words, they did what, G, what Joshua told them to do. What does Jesus say to you? What, what, has, what has Jesus told you to do? You want to overcome these situations, these circumstances? You know, people of God, the secular realm, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say it does you no good. But what I will tell you is that it will not lead you to a higher spiritual level in Christ. We must do what Jesus is telling you to do. You know what it is for you. I can't tell you what it is. I can't tell you what your situation is. I can't tell you how to deal with your situation other than doing what Jesus tells you to do. Now look at what happened. Look at what happened. And, and now, and they drew near and put their feet, every one of those that were subduing their enemies under the, underneath their feet. And, and someone say, uh, somebody say this with it. Someone say this with me. Underneath my feet. Come on out. Say it like you really mean it. Underneath my feet. Listen to what it says in the book of Romans. And the God of peace shall, shoot, shall, shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the God of peace shall soon bruise Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Are you listening to me? Are you, are you, are you seeing where I'm going here? Then Joshua said to this, said this to them, do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For the, thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against who you fight. I want to see how many of you wrote something on a piece of paper. I don't need to know what it is. I don't have to see what it is. But these situations were intended. Those kings were intended to reveal to the people that there would be opposition. There would be problems. Yes, you can win. I'm going to present them to you. I'm going to, I'm going to give them to you. I'm going to cast them your way. You're going to defeat them, but you're going to fight. Joshua said, bring them to me. So what if I was to say to you, if these things in your hand represent that king that the enemy has raised in your life to come against you, to come against you, what if I was to say, in this position in which I find myself, to see if there would be an act of obedience, not to me, but to what the Spirit of the living God is saying to you, bring them to me, what would you do? What if I said to you right now, that situation, that circumstance, that problem, that trial, that opposition, that thing that is coming against you, is in your hand on the form of this paper and like Joshua said to the people bring them to me and I'm saying to you right now thus saith the Lord bring them to me says the Lord what would you do I don't see a lot of people responding because it's an act of faith and it's an act of obedience because it was in that situation listen this is mine pastor David you have something too yes and you bring it to Jesus you take it to Jesus and Joshua says now this is what I want you to see because you're in covenant with me you brought that situation to me I want you to put your foot on that neck and I want you to see that this is what will happen to anything that comes against you because you are my covenant people. I'm going to say to you, how many of you right where you are or make your way up to the altar can say, I'm going to put that situation metaphorically underneath my feet to show and display that I'm a child of faith, that I'm a person of God. Listen, 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 whatever it is, whatever, this is between you and God. This is between you and God. Right now, right now, listen, this is what I want you to do. 
that paper that you have Aaron you know what it is right stand to your feet stand to your feet right now let's stand to your feet this is symbolic this is symbolic okay stand to your feet you have it Maya you have it okay you have it you have it you have it that problem whatever it is you know what it is you know what the enemy is trying to come against you know you know and he uses these things in our lives to to cause us to give up on God to say I don't want the promises of God I don't believe in the promises of God I don't believe that the sun will stand still if I say it to listen that's what it represents you know what it is you know how, how many have this as Joshua said this is what I want you to do I want you to put it down and I want you to put your foot on that situation like you're putting it on the neck of that challenge of that problem metaphorically in a way of analogy in a way of a symbol to display to that situation that that situation is going to be underneath your feet come on now how many you have it there do you believe that do you believe right now right now right now right now right now it's underneath your feet right now listen people of god listen listen some of you are holding on to it some of you didn't want to come up sometimes in life that's what happens when Jesus says this, put it, put it underneath your feet. Instead, we say, no, I'm just going to hold on to it for memories. I'm going to hold on to it to, because, because, because I just want to hold on to it. Here's another thing. Sometimes we do this. And we don't even realize that it's attached to us. But it is. Oh, oh no. Get off of me. Get off of me. Get off of me. It must be the anointing of God. <laughs> Don't walk around with this attached to you. If it's on you right now, listen. If you're in denial and say you never have any issues, you're simply losing your own battle. Joshua said, bring it to me. Identify them, bring them. Bring them. Bring them, Aaron. Bring them to Jesus. Bring it right and through that process through that process no remember now look at what happened let's look at what happened remember the kings were hiding in the cave i'm going to tell you this if you have a problem a situation don't hide it in the cave don't let it hide in the cave get it out but look at what happened next i'm almost done listen and afterward joshua struck them and killed them and hanged them on five trees and they were hanging on the trees until evening you see, people of God, all of our battles are won through Christ. Are you listening to me? All of your battles are won through Christ. Not me, not someone else, not Sister Susie, not Brother Bob, whoever, through Christ. Now, look at what occurred. In that situation, after it had happened, after it had happened, they threw the dead bodies back into the cave. Get this. When you know it's underneath your feet, you've defeated it. Now, before it was hiding in the cave, now it no longer has a hold of you. Now it no longer controls you. Now it no longer determines how you're going to feel. Now you've dealt with it. Now it's underneath your feet. Now it's okay to throw it away and put it in that cave. Why? Because now it is dead. People of God, if it has been overcome, if you've dealt with it, don't keep bringing it up. Let it go. Let it go. That is who you were, not who you are. That is what you used to do, not what you do now. That is all the, that is your past. Be strong in the Lord today in Christ. Amen. People of God, come on up, somebody. Listen, listen, listen. Oh. The battle is not yours. But you'll have to fight. Are you listening to me? Don't be convinced that you don't have to fight because you do. Listen, the word of God very clearly says that he would deliver the land to the people. There were giants in the land. But the giants did not run. They had to defeat their giants. What is that battle in your life? How many of you are willing to fight? How many are willing to fight for your destiny in God? How many are you willing to say, I trust God with all my heart. I'm going to be in alignment with Him. I'm going to submit everything to Him. I'm going to live for His glory. Is that you today? I wonder if this is where it starts, right here. At the altar of the Most High. Now remember, that situation, that situation, every time it raises itself back in your mind, there's a battle for your mind. 
There's a battle, a war for your thoughts, a battle for how you're going to feel. Every time it comes against you in your mind, you take it out of your mind and put it back under your feet. Come on, somebody, put it back under your feet. Why? Because you are to have victory. You are to be an overcomer. We together can walk forward in the things of God. That is the spirit of the living God that says, you can do this in me, says the Lord. We can do that. I don't know if this is enough to make anyone shout, but I feel like shouting into the glory of God, to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Why? Because this is a defining moment. We leave this place and we're not the same. Now we know we're going to fight. When that situation brings fear, you fight. When that situation brings doubt, you fight. When that situation tells you you're not good enough, you fight. When that situation says God will never use you, you fight. You fight for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, right now, right now, right now. Come on, somebody. Let's worship the God that we serve.